everyone. Welcome back to Imagine After Hours. Today we are highlighting two resources in Greater Victoria that provide access to fresh, healthy food for absolutely free. Today we're going to be talking with Patrick from the Rainbow Kitchen and Deborah from Living Edge Markets. Just a quick reminder to please take our survey and provide us any feedback that you have on these episodes as well as any ideas for what you'd like to see in upcoming episodes. Also, press that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of this kind of content. You mentioned that the Rainbow Kitchen has gone from being a grassroots organization to um, a food security hub here in Greater Victoria. Um, so do you want to share a little bit more about food security in general and how does that look like in practice at the Rainbow Kitchen? Yeah, so the Rainbow Kitchen started about 15 years ago. Um, 10 years we've been a society in BC and and always focusing on how to feed our community in the, in the most compassionate way possible. And it's been a lot of volunteers who started this program and who still continue to execute execute the daily lunches provided to our community. Um, and so we want to make sure that that, that, that piece, that, that connective piece of our, our fellow neighbors helping our neighbors is really something that always exists here at the Rainbow Kitchen. Um, and food security is, is one step even further in that it kind of includes our grocers and our wholesalers and our farmers. Um, and so food security indicating that nothing goes to waste and that nothing gets unused. Um, and so when a farmer has a vegetable that, you know, didn't it get to the market on time, but still looks great, or a grocery store has an, a sale item that might be just about ready to go into the compost, but still has some great usability left, instead of, instead of hitting the compost, they send it to us what we can repurpose into a lunch. We provide um, lunches and breakfast every weekday and then anything outside of even that. So say we get a, a bunch of um, potatoes that we just don't need potatoes this week, we make sure that those potatoes go to someone in the community that needs either our guests directly or another community or organization that's doing similar work in the community like ours. So oh, great, okay. So literally no food goes to waste. Nothing gets wasted and even our compost, um, even if we can't say, find a final home for it um, with a with a community partner or a, 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 a guest um, we have we have chickens that we we also help supplement in our community backyard chickens and we have a garden of our own so it, it's every little piece is used wow amazing yeah. Yeah. Um, and so do you have quite a few different partners on board? Um, you mentioned grocery stores and farms. It's a it's an absolute community collection that makes Rainbow Kitchen exist. Um, from our farmers to the grocery stores, to the wholesalers, to the farmers market, to all the volunteers who come in and just want to help us clean. It's not one person. It's not just even me as the executive director who I can come in and turn on the lights, but I know I can't make 100 or 200 meals every single weekday. I, it's such a team work and we, we're all joyful, but but yeah, we all know we can't do it without each other. Amazing. Um, and so the Rainbow Kitchen, you mentioned you served like 190 meals today. Um, so yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about your food service? Sure, thanks for that. Um, Rainbow Kitchen is known for lunch in our community and known for being that hub for a safe place to to get sustenance for lunch. But, but we've really grown over the past 10 years to do so much more than lunch. Mm -hmm. So breakfast starts every day at 8.30 and runs just up until lunch. Then we move into a hot lunch program. Today is to go. We do hope to get back to a seated all meal sharing collective group Group together at some point soon and then we have that little rainbow market so you can come in and get lunch you can get breakfast but then you can fill as many bags as you like uh if every weekday that we're open on those days when you need uh, a bus ticket to get home we've got a bus ticket so if you have, have too many bags we're going to try and make sure you get home safe um prior, prior to covid we had other community programs like music and gardening and other kind of soul filling things but through covid it's been Make sure you can make sure we can sustain the food components as much as possible. What's your menu like? Like, do you have a different lunch every day? Yeah, um, we are not. A, uh, there is nothing wrong with being soup and sandwich place. Those things are great, but our chefs are so inspired by what we receive every day from our great partners that today was sausage stroganoff with fries and vegetables and dessert and coffee and tea. Um, so our, our teams are so inspired by what shows up. It's more than it's more than just. Um, it's more than just the basics. It's a it's a dish of love. Is this free and is it for everyone? Absolutely. There is no questions asked. There is no registration required. If you don't see something you need out there, let us know. We have protein, we have vegetables, we have dairy sometimes. Let's share what we have because we are going to get more and if you need it, that's what we're here for. 
um, we are connected to the annex of the Esquimalt United Church. The rainbow staircase is kind of the indicator you're on the right direction. We are not affiliated with the church, although we are incredible partners and great tenants of theirs. We're non-secular. So although rainbow is in our name, we're not specifically an LGBTQIA2 spirit organization, but we welcome everybody. Everyone's included. Um, no questions asked. Just looking forward to meeting new guests. You can always check us out online at www.rainbowkitchen.ca. Um, always feel free to send an email to any of us. We're always happy to answer your inquiries um, and welcome new volunteers. And then we definitely have a little Facebook and a little uh, Instagram page if you want to follow along and keep in touch. My name's Deborah Price, and I was uh, luckily, luckily enough to be introduced to Living Edge by a friend who is already working as the funds developer for Living Edge. We have uh, historically 10 markets. Uh, we've had a few closed since the beginning of COVID. So there's a market running almost every day somewhere in town because there's no ID or no registration required. Clients are welcome to go to any or all. It doesn't need to be in your own neighborhood. You can go to whichever one you do need to. Um, have, you know, the, the operations of each market is slightly different and hopefully with restrictions living lifting COVID wise, it will be easier to just go stand in line for maybe up to 30 minutes and then go through and pick what you want. But right now, some markets are still giving out tickets to come back so that there's not a congregation of people at any one time. So we really have kept things flowing through the pandemic and hopefully they'll flow even better after. <laughs> and then we'll have all our markets open again. And, and um, so that'll be nine. Our, so, so people can drop in um, at these markets and, you know, browse what's available. And it, is everything free to, to take home? Yes. Yeah, everything's free. In a non-COVID world, <laughs> it's set up like a farmer's market uh, with all of the produce arranged on, on tables or stands or whatever. And then you go through with your grocery bag, grocery bag and point out what you want. And then our volunteer puts that in the, your bag for you. And on you go to the next thing. Then you grab the oranges and then you get some squash and then you get some sort of vegetable you don't know what to do with. And they suggest something. And so where can people find out more information about the location of the markets and the times that they're open? Just check our website, uh, www.livingedge.ngo or our Facebook page just look up for living edge i think it's under living edge community but our calendar is always pinned to the top there so that's the best bet just check those before you go i always say it's not about the food the food is the tool to meet greater needs and the need especially i think we've all felt this through the pandemic is the need is for community and a functioning community and helping each other when we can <laughs> you know, because we all have need at lots of times in our lives. And, you know, to answer the phone and have someone question like, OK, I'm really just struggling right now. I'm wondering what I have to do to, to get some help. And I can hear them starting to tear up or cry when I say no registration, no ID, show up will give you food and it's not all about the food it's all about the nutrition for, for soul and body and community it pays back itself right it just pays back all right thanks everyone for tuning into this episode please remember to subscribe to this channel if you've enjoyed what you saw as well as if you have any feedback for us on what you'd like to see on these episodes moving forward please take our survey i will provide the link below in the description box on youtube and in the comments on facebook We'll see you again very soon.